Hello guys, welcome back to TechDoz and in this video we will be looking at the neighboring bitwise ZOR problem which is from lead code number 2683. Let's now read the problem statement. In this problem a zero indexed array derived with length n is derived by computing the bitwise ZOR of adjacent values in a binary array original of length n. Specifically for each index i in the range of 0 to n minus 1. If i equals n minus 1 then the derived data i will be uh, the bitwise ZOR between the ith element and the first element that means the last element and the first element of the original array otherwise in any general case the derived at i will be original at i zor of original at i plus 1 that means you can consider the array to be cyclic given an array derived your task is to determine whether there exists a valid binary array original that could have formed derived return true if such an array exists or false otherwise now let's look at the constraint before we look at an example in this particular case uh, the length of the derived array is 10 to the power of 5 so definitely we need to write an algorithm which is better than n square because that will make it 10 to the power of 10 we need something less than 10 to the power of 8 and each of the values in the derived array is either 0 or 1 let's now look at an example for better understanding in this case let's assume that our derived array is of size 3101 now we know that from the problem statement derived at i is either 0 or 1 only and let's say that our original array is a comma b comma c so this one is actually denoting a zor of b this 0 is denoted by b zor of c and this one is denoted by c zor of a now the problem here is asking about is there any original array which can lead to the derived array if you follow this kind of formulation can we have a value of a b c in such a way that a zor b will be 1 b or c will be 0 and c or a will be 1 so if you can have a value of a b c then you need to return true otherwise if you cannot have then you need to return false so in order to solve this problem uh, what we can do is we can try all the possible combinations for this a so a can have two possible values 0 or 1 again b can have two possible values 0 and 1 and c can also have two possible value so if you generate all the possibilities there will be 2 to the power of n possibilities and we already know that n can be maximum 10 to the power of 5 so that will be a huge number and definitely we cannot solve by this method now in this particular example if you take a equals to 1 b equals to 0 c equals to 0 then it will be giving us a's or b equals to 1 the b's or c equals to 0 and the c's or a value equals to 1 so we will get 101 since we have a valid uh, value of a b c to be 101 therefore uh, we need to return true for this particular example now if you look at example number two if the derived value is 101 then you cannot have any valid value of a b c in such a way that a's or b will be 1 b's or c will be 0 and c's or a will be 0 it will not be possible okay so for that reason i will be returning false here now if we look at a general case where the original array is having a b c then the derived array must be containing a's or b b's or c c's or a so what happens if we take the zor between all of these elements of the derived array so if you take the zor between all the elements of the z of the derived array then you will find that a is occurring two times the b is occurring two times and also c is occurring two times so each of the element will occur two times and we know that in a zor if you take a zor a it will be zero b zor b will be zero so if the an element is present and you take the zor with the same element then it will always be zero right so if you take the zor of all the items in the derived array then you should always get zero if it was derived from the original array from a valid original array okay if you don't get a zero value then it can never be valid because the rule of the problem itself mentions that each of the element will occur two times right because if you take a it is occurring in the first and the last element if you take b it is occurring in the uh, first and the second element c is occurring in the second and the third element and so on so if you take zor every element will occur in pair and that is why each of them will cancel out each other and you will always get zero therefore we can just iterate over the entire array and get the zor value if the zor value is zero then it is valid otherwise it is not valid so the time complexity will be order of n and space complexity will be order of one let's now look at the code in this problem we are given the derived array and as i said i'll be taking a result value equals to zero and iterate over all the derived values 
so i will just be finding the zor of each of the item since every item is expected to occur two times if derived array was taken from the valid original array definitely the result will be zero if it is not zero then that means the derived array is not valid and therefore we need to return false this is the entire code and i hope you are able to understand it if you are someone who is looking to prepare for top product based company within a limited time of just three months then we have brought for you both the dsa and the system design live interview training program the most important feature of this program is you get a filtered and condensed structured curriculum in-depth discussion of all the topics and my guarantee of your understanding one-on-one -on -one guidance with me and live weekend classes to know more about the training you can whatsapp us on this given number.